Hello from the World Bank IMF Spring Meetings in Washington, D.C., and welcome to the Digital Zone. I'm here with Lord Mark Malik Brown, president of the Open Society Foundations. Mark, thank you for being here, and today we are going to be focusing on IDA, the World Bank's fund that works across 75 countries to invest in the future of people and planet. And Mark, you have been a long-term partner, advocate of IDA. Tell us why you and OSF choose to support IDA. Well, in many ways, I'm a veteran of IDA. I've been in, engaged in one way or another since its early days and have seen it grown, grow from a really important component of total development financing into, for poorer countries, the core main branch of development finance on concessional terms and in some cases on grant terms. Uh, available to them and you know that to me you know is something we have to keep strengthen and preserve at a time when uh, development financing flows are in all sorts of trouble the relative importance of IDA is greater than ever before. Thank you, Mark. And, and you said in December um, that uh, the road to a successful COP, the climate conference, lies through Zanzibar, which is, of course, where the IDA midterm review took place. Tell us, what do you see as the role of IDA in climate, but also in larger global challenges that affect IDA countries? Well, I think the first critical reason why it was so important to the politics of this year of COP uh, is that, you know, it's the indication to poorer countries that, you know, pure climate finance aimed uh, at, at the sort of mitigation efforts of middle income and richer countries is not going to crowd out the focus on poverty reduction, which remains at the core of IDA's mission. But the second purpose, of course, is climate investments to uh, not, not, not just where, where possible mitigate climate change, but to adapt to it. And, you know, poor countries like the, have exactly the same challenges as the rest of us. Uh, challenges to soil quality, weather changes, uh, rising sea levels, volatility of, 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 of weather patterns, all of which mean that they too need to be sort of, if you like, hardwired uh, to contain and manage climate related threat so you know on both scores the investment in poverty reduction and the investment in climate adaptation for poorer countries ida is critical and it's worth noting when you list those challenges that more than 50 percent of ida's financing actually goes to adaptation um, and, and this is actually a key year for IDA that we're in, the IDA 21 replenishment, as you well know. At this critical point, what is your message to policymakers, decision makers uh, in this critical year? You know, recognize IDA for what it is. Uh, it's been around a long time, but that absence of novelty shouldn't take away from its absolute strategic centrality to development funding for poorer countries. Uh, and you know, if you took it away, it would be like cutting off the main leg of a chair. The chair would fall over. Uh, and in that sense, you know, development in many critical ways depends on this IDA investment. So I hope countries will, will step up. Thank you, Mark. I really like the chair analogy. Thank you very much for being here today at the Digital Zone at the World Bank IMF Spring Meetings 2024. And thank you all for tuning in. Thank you.